Hello everybody, Sir Termo here again. I want to come clean to you guys. I have a problem. I have an obsession with Udyr. Ever since the patch came out, guys, all I have played has been different Udyr decks. I have not played anything else. So even though you guys got an Udyr video yesterday with Udyr Galio, Today, I just have to bring you another one because I think there's a lot of cool Udyr decks out there. And I'm having just so much fun with Udyr that I have to showcase them. So today, we're going to bring you guys Udyr LeBlanc. So this is an interesting version of like Reputation that combines Udyr because remember, Udyr now has five attacks. So technically, Udyr can count towards Reputation. So the idea here is that you're just putting a lot of pressure early on. So you're kind of, you're kind of putting this deck more like a better pressure mid-range deck that then just finishes the game either with like a big Udyr that has Overwhelm or a LeBlanc that has Overwhelm and you can like, you know, do mirror image to copy your Overwhelm units. And you also have the Indictacy Tactician to just be able to push so much pressure and be able to kill opponents that way. This deck is really, really fun. Uh, it was suggested to us by one of our viewers, Metal Sonnet, and I have had a lot of fun with it ever since he suggested it last night on stream. Um, hopefully you're able to have just as much fun as we do. So. We're playing a lot of reputation triggers here. So Trash and Snapper, uh, Glory Seeker is really good, right? Reputation as well as be able to pull a target. Uh, we do the Barros and Trap it to be able to get the Yeti, which is a really nice one drop for 5-5. Five, five. LeBlanc, of course, Reputation. And I think LeBlanc's buff, buff is actually huge. Yes, she is still vulnerable to Mystic Shot, which is a little bit annoying, but her, her mirror image is so good, so good. So I think she's really, really good. Uh, Trafer Reckless Trafarian, so what I talked about earlier about putting a lot of pressure, this is what I mean. By putting the Reckless Trafarian in the field and having Glory Seeker, you can put a lot, a lot of pressure into the opponent. Um, and then obviously Trafarian Assessor because we have a lot, a lot of five attack units letting us draw. Udyr, just a lot of the value from Udyr uh, from his uh, stand swaps. All Seer, another reputation trigger, but she also is able to give us a zero cost stand swaps in case that you don't get an Udyr in the field and then Tactician for the Robics. And then for support, Inner Beast is just such a good spell. Uh, it's, it allows us to seal all the blank against like a Mystic Shot, forcing the opponent to have to spend two cards to kill all the blank, for example. And he also gives us a Stand Swap, which is really, really good. Troll Shan, easy way to save our units. Uh, Boping Wonder is a nice support card, giving us a lot of Stand Swaps. Willing Death and Bloody Business are ways to be able to deal with the opponent's units. Um, and then Whisper Wars for draws. Really easy to trigger Whisper Wars because you have a lot of five attack units um again really really fun deck uh so hope you enjoy the games coming up soon i think yeah this has a lot of potential i obviously as, you, as i keep saying we have an obsession with udir right here so we have tried a lot of udir decks out and definitely so far the best udir decks to me are udir gali which you guys saw yesterday udir lb which we'll see today and then udir chondo control which you will see tomorrow you heard that right it's going to be three days and three Udyr decks. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this game and hopefully you enjoyed this deck. I'll see you all at the end of the video for some mulligan tips. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Diego Shurima. So this is Mono Diego Shurima, which means that they're going to just try to level up the Diego. Can we put enough pressure before they get there? The problem with, Glo the, problem with the Trifarian Glory Seeker is the fact that the opponent plays Balfi. So I think we have to first do with the Reckless Trifarian. This is a nice curve. We can do Wonder Trifarian. And the reason we keep the Inner Beast is because it will let us protect the Glory Seeker versus um, if the opponent has like a Balfis, right? There is a consideration that it's better to do the Trapper. Oh, wait, we just messed up. We were supposed to we were supposed to play the Booping Wonder, but I guess this works out. We're just going to attack and get our five damage. The opponent plays Balfis. We have Inner Beast. He ended up working out. <laughs> He ended up working out, but we definitely messed up a little bit. Um, when does it have Balfis? I feel like if they had Balfis, they would have done it. So we can go ahead and do the Trapper. So here we can do the Trapper. I feel like if the opponent had the Balfis, they always would have done it. We get the Jetty right at the bat. Opponent's going to try to kill this with the Encroaching Miss, which lets us do the Inner Beast to be able to save our, um, our Glory Seeker. Boom. So now the Glory Seeker stays alive. I'm thinking we still keep the Inner Beast available, to be honest, though. Just because we want to probably be able to uh, to block. I mean, to be able to save. 
We do another Triparian, and we also do another Glory Seeker, and we can potentially just push a ton of damage. That's a little bit unfortunate. I think we just go and kill both units and just push a ton of damage. Yeah, I think we just go like this, right? I think we just go like this. Opponent shouldn't have any good way to block this. I guess he could block that Trapper. He can block the Trapper uh, with the Soldier. But he still loses the whole board. And we have enable reputation. I think it's fine. I think we push five here. I think this is fine. We still have another Trifarian here. Uh, we still have enough units. And we can actually give overwhelm to some of these units. Because we have enough stand swaps. There we go. We hit the reputation, which is what I was looking for. Uh, so we can go ahead and do this. We get the LeBlanc. Opponent wants to attack with this. I'm okay with that. Opponent could also do the Walking Sands and have a block in next turn. If the opponent is not careful, they could just straight up die. If the opponent has the Viego Despair, it's not a big deal. I think at this point, we just have to try to put a lot of pressure on them. The question is, am I supposed to open attack? I think we are. The problem with the open attack is that we're not really winning here. Opponent could also have the Hydrobine. And if they have the Hydrobine, am I okay with that? I think I should be okay with that. I can still put the Overwhelm on the LeBlanc. I feel, like I, should, I feel like I need to draw. I feel like I need to draw. I feel like they, we're not going to win this turn. So I feel like we draw now before we start losing our units. I potentially get the... Uh, potentially what I wanted to get. So what I what I really wanted to get here was the I really wanted to get the thing. I really wanted to get the um the indecisive tactician. So I think the tactician would have been like really really good. Uh, unfortunately we didn't get it. So it's a little bit it's a little bit unfortunate. Um technically the most efficient way to do this, yeah, I think we do it like this, right? We also have technically damage here. We do it like this. Overwhelm is pretty nice. We get the mirror image and we can get the overwhelm. This is such a this is such this is not great for him, right? Wait, opponent? We just do inner beast, right? We just do inner beast and kill that. So we get the Diego. Stasis doesn't save it because then we're pushing eight damage and then he loses to the he loses to the sigil next turn. So he cannot do the stasis. He cannot do the hourglass here because then he loses to the sigil. Which is what the opponent is having a problem with right now. <laughs> so he has two cards. It could have been quicksand. It could have been quicksand. So we would not. I mean, quicksand could have just been a big punish. I don't think there's anything I could do about it. I don't think there's anything I could have done about the quicksand. We get the mirror image. Um, and then next time we potentially do it that way. We still have the sigil. So we can actually kill the Hadjabine. Although my thought is that the opponent has the stasis. I feel like the way that the opponent has been playing, they have the stasis. Unfortunately, we didn't go, we didn't draw the tactician. The tactician would have completely won us this game. Hmm. We have Troll Shan, so I'm not too concerned about this. We also have a second LeBlanc. Hmm. I think we just kill this now. I think we just kill this now. Before the opponent can summon a second Viego. Yeah, if they do the stasis, I think I'm okay with that. It does summon another Hydrobine next turn. But we still are able to save our unit here, right? We're still able to do a Troll Shan. This is going to also enable the LeBlanc a little bit further away. And then we do the same thing. I think I really want to look for the Tactician. Yes, I think I really want to look for the Tactician. Uther is not bad. Uther is not bad because we can give Uther Overwhelm. And now we're going to have two units with Overwhelm. Because we're going to have the Mirror Image available. 
which I think is a big thing. The big thing is that we have at least two units with overwhelm because we can do we can do the Udir here, give it overwhelm, and then actually summon a second Udir. That's also gonna have overwhelm. Or we could just do it on the uh, we could also just do it on the LeBlanc as well. Point it probably has quicksand. That's the only concern that I have to be worried about. It's like this. Yeah, we're gonna do it like this. The back is pushing more damage than the Udyr. Vengeance, okay. So yeah, I did not play around the Vengeance and I don't think I was ever gonna play around it. Uh, I think we just do the Trafarian right here and kill this Hydropine and then just rely on Udyr to win us the game next turn. Ponis has another, okay. So Ponis gets another one. Ponis is down to just one car. We have two blockers. We have Trojan to save us. Uh, Uther's gonna die to the Hydra Vine, to this encroaching mist, right? Because we're gonna have to commit Troll Channel. I guess he can also be pulled by almost everything else. But if he pulls here, he's gonna be in trouble. And if he attacks with the mist, we just kill it. Ooh. So he's gonna go for the lethal. 7, 11. I guess that is lethal if he pulls that way. I guess technically it is lethal. Right? So we're going to have to commit the Trollshan to be able to stop the blockers. And if the opponent has... We need to block here. Because if the opponent has quick attack... Uh, sorry, if the opponent has like a glimpse, he can actually kill by buffing this up. Um, Yeah, let's do it like this. But it could actually kill. They could also have atrocity, right? So it could be it possible that one of the last guys is atrocity. Yeah, there we go. By doing the glimpse here, by doing by blocking like this, we stopped ourselves from dying from the encroaching mist getting buffed up. But I guess no, 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 because he doesn't have Diego on the field. So we actually misplay. For some reason, I thought he had Diego on the field. Yeah, that's a misplay. We didn't have to do that. Because the, the, the miss was never getting buffed up. Opponent didn't have a Biego. We also misplayed by playing the Trapper, by the way. He always had to be he always had to be the Wanderer, because now we now we're forced to actually um like commit this first. And if the opponent has one more vengeance, we lose the game. If we did the wonder first and committed the stance, we could have just dragged the blocker and attacked with the big Udyr right off the bat. So now we give the opponent one more action, which is gonna kill us we also you know made our draw a little bit worse but he still lifts at one but he actually will not live because of the fact that um like even if he blocks with the three health opponent needs to have bow fees otherwise they lose to the ram stands the Ramstance also kills his units, which is pretty nice for us. Actually, the Ramstance kills us both. <laughs> Wait, opponent, the Ramstance will kill me too. I have one HP. Opponent. Uh, we misplayed though. We misplayed a couple times there. We could have killed the Hydrabine. Uh, we, we we thought that they had. We thought that he's. Um, we were playing around the glimpse, which obviously we called him having the glimpse. But Biego was not on the field, which means that, they, that even if he glimpses, his thing doesn't actually get buffed up. So we were always going to live at 1 HP there, and we got killed the miss. So yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Malphite Talia. So... I'll keep the LeBlanc for now. We get the Trifarian, which is a lot of pressure early on. The opponent has a lot of good blockers though, so it's a little bit awkward. This is not a bad card. This is not a bad card. Because he, he can he cannot block this safely, right? So he cannot block this safely. I'm just gonna go ahead and kill the ship right now before he can get bigger. No reason to wait for it. We can do the Trifarian to eat at the rock hopper. 
Yeah, we can do the Trifarian to either the Rock Hopper, right? Pulling those Rock Hopper here. We attack with two to deal with two damage. Ooh, not a, not a Rock Hopper. That's pretty good. So, but I think I still think it was worth blocking last turn just so that the chip couldn't have been a good blocker into this guy or into my other units. Pulling gets a second chip anyway, so it is what it is, right? Cool. Let's do the block right now. I'm gonna do the block right now because the opponent hasn't played a rock hopper yet or on Rebel Earth. And if they want to kill LeBlanc with Ancient Prep, they're gonna lose the blocker that they would have gotten from the Ancient Prep. So they can they have to either sacrifice a blocker or sacrifice a mana. And either one I'm okay with. So I'm, I'm putting the opponent on having the Rider of Arcane. And, but we can never play around that with LeBlanc. Yeah, there you go. So he sacrificed, he decides to sacrifice the blocker. So now he's gonna have to sacrifice his chip next turn, right? Because the Trafarian is gonna be pretty big. Opponent's down to three cards now. He's gonna have to sacrifice the chip. Otherwise, he's gonna take five damage from this. Okay, I guess he can sacrifice the Devout instead. Giving him access to uh giving him access to another uh Rider of Arcane. In which case, we probably... I guess he could have Talia here. Talia will give this another blocker. But if he does Talia, we can just develop the Udyr. So it's actually okay if it's Talia here, I think. Like, if this is a Talia, I'm okay with that. We can summon the Udyr while being safe. Because the problem right now is that the moment that we summon Udyr, opponent could do another uh, right, right? How are we supposed to stall this long though? So let's say that the opponent has another right of... I think we do it. Yeah, I think we do it. If the opponent has another right of arcane, they have another right of arcane. I can't play around it. I can't play around it. So if they have it, they have it. Doesn't have it. He could have predicted into it. So let's make sure we give with the regeneration right now. So this will protect us against the Rider of Arcane. Opponent doesn't have enough blockers next turn, so we can either hit 10. We just open attack, right? So we just open attack for either 10 if if he decides to block this with the chip. And we're still three away from the reputation. But that will give that will give it to us with the bloody business. So we can open attack. And the bloody business will give it the, give us the reputation that we need. Yep, he, he decides to go ahead and kill Udyr. Okay, decides not to, which is cool. What we're going to do is that we're going to actually do the second stand swap on the Udyr. Just so that he's able to kill a Talia. Because Talia is going to have 6 health. So we need to be able to do the bear stance on the Udyr. He also makes the Udyr a little bit bigger. There it is. And we can level up the Udyr next turn, by the way, right? I guess what we have to worry about here is we have to worry about Malphite. So Malphite is a problem because Malphite will be able to stun us. Malphite will be able to stun the Udyr as well as have his own stun spell. The only the good thing is that the Malphite he wouldn't have enough mana to do the Malphite plus a um plus an absorber. Because he's only going to have 10 mana. So he can do Malphite, but he cannot do Absorber. Meaning that we can just block the Malphite with the Wanderer. Putting could technically have the counter for this right here as well. Like they could have a Stasis. Or they run a Negation. Doesn't have either, I guess. Tactician is pretty good. If it's not Malphite, I think Tactician is actually a, a consideration for next turn. But again, the problem here is Malphite. Malphite stuns us and then puts us in a bad spot. I guess we can also do this, by the way, and have a... No, because the problem is Malphite has enough mana to stun our blockers again. So we're going to have to take 12 damage if the opponent summons Malphite. So if the, if the opponent summons the Malpha, we literally have no choice but to take 12 damage here. Which is a little bit unfortunate. Ooh. Ooh. That's not a Malphite. 
We have willing death. Ooh. Ooh. I'm okay with this. We have willing death to protect against any shenanigans. Like they say that the opponent has the absorber. We got zero cost Tansua, meaning that we can level up the Udyr. That doesn't work, my friend, because now we can just do this. Udyr is going to be out of range of a Rider of, of, right of Arcane. So the opponent was, if the opponent was relying on a Rider of Arcane, that's not going to work. We can actually do the Hiara Osir here and give Udyr even more health. I guess double right is a problem. But we, we can protect against double right because of the troll shank. I really like the Hiara right here. I really like the Hiara a lot. He's actually going to go for it. He's actually going to go for double right. Potentially. And if he does it like that, I think I'm okay, right? If he doesn't commit the if he does if he doesn't commit the first right right here, we can just do the Hiara and make a Uder even bigger. So the problem with Malpa is that Malpa can stun, right? When he comes down. Yeah, so there you go. So because the opponent committed this, we have to actually do the troll shen instead. So we're gonna have to do the Trifurian and then keep mana for troll shen to be able to protect against the second part of Arcane. And then that would be his last, that would be his last right, right? Oh, that's even better. So opponent even, opponent now gives me, opponent now gives me access to, uh, opponent just gave me access to a stance swap there. That's even better. I think we open. So we open because of the malphite threat and because we have the rally available, right? So we have the rally available, so we can just open here and there you go. The Malphite threat is too big, so by opening, opponent only have one blocker, so it wouldn't have been enough to kill us. So yeah, GG's. So in this match, we'll be going up against Estriel Swain. Hmm. How does this one go? Man, the Torsion is pretty good, no? The Glory Seeker is going to die to like this thick shot. Maybe the inner beast is actually good as well. The glory seeker, I think, is greedy. I think the glory seeker is greedy. I think let's try to see if we can find our, our reckless trifarian. We did not get it. We ended up with a snapper, which is not great. Uh, does the opponent commit the thermal right here? Do they just take the two? Okay, they're just gonna take the two. Um, don't doesn't look great right now. Okay, we get LeBlanc. Opponent gets blockers for everything. So even with LeBlanc on the field, it's not going to matter. Because we can not summon LeBlanc right here. Otherwise, he's just going to die to a Mystic Shot or a Death Hand. So we can only summon LeBlanc next turn. And then even then, we're still in trouble. I am I'm, I am willing to pass, though. If the opponent's passing like that, I'm 100% I'm willing to pass. It could just be Uder right here. I kind of like the LeBlanc, though. Kind of like the LeBlanc. We have Troll Shen available. And we also have Inner Beast. I guess opponent could have Flock, but he's going to have to commit at least two spells. So it's going to be a 2 for 2 no matter what. I don't hate it. And now he also means that if he blocks this, we're still pushing, still level up, so, still progressing the level up on the LeBlanc. I think we save Udyr for next turn. Yeah, there you go. What if we do inner beast first? Because if the opponent has a flock, he's always gonna be able to kill us to Trojan. So I think inner beast is actually better. Death hand. So this is two. Okay, so now we do the troll shen. Now we do the troll shen. If the, if the opponent decides to also stop this, then it is what it is. Like now, if they have a flock. That's or have also a mystic shot, then we're trading three for three. And now they do the flock, and that's one less flock I have to worry about for Udir. Okay, yep. So that's one less flock I have to worry about for Udir, uh, which I think Udir is more important in this match than LeBlanc. Now it does mean we lose our troll chance, which is a little bit awkward, 
And we still have to worry about thermal, so we probably cannot summon the Udyr right away. Oh, wow. We still lose to a thermal right here. Or a double mystic. Or a mystic plus flock. A lot of things that kill us here. I think we have to do it, though. I think we have to do it, unfortunately. And if the opponent has another flock, then it is what it is. Okay. That tells us not, not flock, I guess. It's pretty good for us. We have the bloody business to be able to kill... To be able to kill that spiderling. Pony has... Pony has nine mana. Why don't we do this first? But then we lose to a stun, right? If we do that first, we lose to the stun. Here we lose to a couple other things though. Here now we lose to a Scorched Earth. If the opponent passes, we have to pass back. I need to force him to do the Scorched Earth right now. Because otherwise we just regenerate, right? Yeah, I think we have to pass back. I don't think we I don't think we give him the chance to Scorched Earth in response to our stance swap. I guess what we could have done get on the Trifarian Assessor. Which wouldn't be bad to be honest. I have to put him on having Scorched Earth. I have to put him on having Scorch Earth and us having the bloody business to respond to it. Hmm. Yeah, the Scorch Earth is just too much of a punish. There it is. Now we can actually kill this Ezreal, right, with the bloody business. He could death hand in response, right? So we need to start with the assessor. We need to start with the assessor just so that we have a blocker. That's unfortunate. We ended up drawing both uh flash bombs. I guess even one was enough. This still puts us vulnerable to a scorched earth now. And now the opponent could death hand here, and that will stun the Udir. So Death Hand will stun this. Uh, we can do the Bear Stance to at least give us to at least give us the health to be able to kill the Swain. But same thing, we're still vulnerable to a Skull Sheriff. We're still very vulnerable to a Skull Sheriff. So Death Hand can kill the Assessor while also stunning the Udir. Then we're going to have to commit this. Or he can just do it like that. So I think I'm still okay with this, right? Can we just do it like this right now? We have a blocker for the swing, so I don't care. We take three, five, six, seven, plus the mystic shot. If the opponent commits the last three point of damage, we can do the bloody business. He might try to get cheeky and try to stun this. If he doesn't attack with swing, then that's a mistake. I guess he shouldn't. Let's see what you've got. Let's do the willing death right here. This is gonna force a flock out of him, right? Oh wow, no flock. So we just get an answer for free, just like that. Hmm. All right. Be my guess. Scorch Earth. No school sheriff still? That's crazy. Opponent probably wants to do their levy Aethan right here. So this is forcing them not to do levy. We have the ways to be able to kill the Swain. And the opponent's going to need to deal with this, right? He has, to, he has to have another stun right here. So he needs to do another spell to stun this right now. We still have access to bloody business. Yeah, there we go. He does the stun, right? We can pass. We have two choices. We can pass or we can do the assessor right here. Let's pass first. We have troll shan and we have the bloody business to be able to kill this. I think this is fine. That's the second spider, by the way. So then next time we just still open. 
I think we always save the bloody business once the opponent actually commits something else, right? We always leave the bloody business for once the opponent actually commits, in case that the opponent has a second swain. It's a little bit unfortunate, though, because if the opponent has a second swain, there's nothing we can do about it. We still take three sets, eight, nine damage. We're still taking nine damage if everything gets through except for Swain. Eleven damage. So assuming everything here hits except for Swain, we're still taking nine damage. Three sets, eight. Actually, 11. So we're taking 11 damage. Yeah. 11 damage, meaning that we lose to a lot of things. We lose to Double Mystic. Double Mystic. It's a problem. We have to do it like this. We have to just go super ham. This opponent still lives at 2 HP, even with this, by the way, because the opponent's going to have... Okay, Static Shock. So now we lose to... We lose to what? It's still Double Mystic. I guess it could be Static plus Mystic now. We have to attack to protect against the stun. But that means that we still lose... We still don't really do anything here, right? I guess we kill him with we, it could be a tie game, right? It could technically be a tie game. We could potentially get another bloody business here or a willing that. Our chances of getting those are about 8%. Do we play for the out? Or do we just go for the tie? We could also get the rally. We could also get the rally. Okay, we don't get it. <laughs> so, we don't get either. Opponent goes down to two. And we don't even have the mana to do the double ramp stance now. Yeah, we don't even have the mana to do the double ramp stance. Ha! Man, if that Whisper Wars costs less, maybe we had a chance. Oh, we just lose, right? We just lose because there's no way for us to hit all three. Yeah, this is game. Yeah, that's game. We misplay. We misplay by not developing. I think we always had to develop there and just play around the fact that he wouldn't have the third stun spider. Because he needed to have Swain and something else to be able to stun us. So yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against <laughs> Udia Gallia. So we go against what we showcased yesterday. Okay, okay. The Glory Seeker, I think, is really good. The Glory Seeker is really good because he can kill the Broadwin, which I think is one of the most important units that I have. Uh, tactician is not that great at the moment. So it's a little bit unfortunate that we got him this early. Let's just wait and see what he does first before we commit this. Because we could also have bloody business next turn. Okay, so if he does that, we're going to start with our one there instead. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead, you block. So with this deck, you want to be aggressive early on. So if your opponent is taking this at blocks like that, I think I'm okay with that. I think we just do the trapper right now. Even if the opponent has the brow win, he doesn't have enough mana to do both the brow win plus the stand swap. So I think it's completely fine to do it like this. Uh, if we don't get the Jetty, I think we just pass. So if we don't get the Jetty next turn, I think we just pass. I guess we could do the Glory Seeker, to be honest. Um, yeah, we can do the Glory Seeker. Because if the opponent passes here, we just pass right back. So yeah. So we'll see. Let's see what happens here. So opponent pass, missing that they lose, they lost some mana. They do the mountain drake. How much do I care about the mountain drake? 
I don't know if I care that much. I don't think I care that much. I, hopefully we get enough Gettys uh, that we're able to actually do the Trafarian Assessor, right? Opponent's down to five. So opponent, if your opponent tries to do the Stancer, we have the bloody business to stop it. And there we go. And just like that, we kill the Mountain Drake and we also use Soppy Stance. That's a big swing. That's a pretty big swing right there. Now, we don't have Udyr, which is a little unfortunate, but opponent also cannot summon their own Udyr. Otherwise, they're just going to lose, right? Uh, we can just start attacking and leaving this back as a threat for later on. I don't think it's worth it to lose this. I don't think it's worth it to lose this. I think it's just going to do it like this. Again, we still have access to another Glory Seeker. Oh, opponent does the Udyr. We do the bloody business, and opponent should have a way to stop this. Should have a way to stop this. I guess technically they could play Elixir of Iron or the Breeder Steel. Um, but I don't think I was going to play around either one of those cards. Oh, look at that. We get the Trifarian, the Reckless Trifarian as well. Um, this one is kind of annoying because the opponent is going to get the Regeneration on it. But if they get if they get the Regeneration there, how scared am I of that? What if we don't care? Or what if we just do this? Why did we just do, why did we just do the bear stance right here? Why did we just do the bear stand right here? So that if the opponent decides to attack, they're gonna get punished. I guess they don't have to attack to be honest. They can just pack, they can just they can they could attack and pretend that they have troll shant. Oh, they're just gonna do one to everything. Alright, I guess we lose the glory seeker. I did not play around that, I'll give him that. I think we just go Y. I think we just go super wide here. I think we just go like this and just go as wide as possible. This is gonna enable our, tra our accessor to draw even more. Opponent only has one, I guess it could have Galio. I don't think Galio is a big deal. Uh, this is gonna be six, that's gonna give us the rally. So let's do it like this first, see what the opponent does. We have the rally open to us. It might be better actually to do the Trifarian and save the rally for later. Wow. I think it's better to save the rally for later. I think it's better to just draw right here. I think it's just better to draw while we have this big board and attack with everything. Yeah, the opponent gets the regen technically. Um, I don't know how much I care about that. He's able to kill one of our units. If he blocks like this, he loses the zero cost stand swap. Not only that, but we can keep this guy alive, right? So we can attack like this and keep this one alive. Yeah, this is the best way to do it. We do nine and we have a reputation trigger. So then next turn we have enough mana to do the reckless track variant plus the tactician. And we should be able to win the game. Opponent only has nine mana. Unless they for some reason, unless they play a judgment, I don't see a way for them to be able to do this damage here. Yeah, so we just do this here. And we just do the rally. And that's it. Pony shouldn't be able to go wider than us. Uh, he will have to sacrifice his units. He has the stand swap. He can kill one of our units right now. Mm, not enough. He needs to have single combat, and he's still going to lose his whole board. He's still going to lose his whole board here, even with single combat. And we just open attack next turn and do the same thing. Trojan is not enough. Trojan still kills us, kills him. But this is the pressure that I talk about. You have just so much value with all these cards. We still keep three units, by the way. An opponent cannot attack without running into one of our ancient jetties. I guess they could give a regeneration right now and attack that way, but we don't care about that. So look at the pressure that we were able to put right there. So pretty crazy. Pretty crazy what this deck can do, right? And we didn't even get Udyr all blank. So yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Pink City. So NAR, GP, and a bunch of Bandal shenanigans. Wow. Uh, Glory Seeker is so bad, right? Because of the fact that they have Make It Rain. So I think we cannot go for the Glory Seeker, at least not for now. Uh, unfortunately, they're going to put a lot more pressure than we can put on them. Yeah, because of the two, one, because of the one drops, right? Now, technically, we could technically do like a nice ram stance that the opponent cannot protect against. Um, 
Unfortunately, that's not going to happen until turn 4. So in the meantime, we're going to be taking a ton of damage here. Which is very bad for us. Yeah, this the Corsair. Another Corsair. So right away, that's 2, 4. 2, 4, 6 damage that we're going to take. And no way to protect it. Wow. Oh. Let's do the Trapper. I need the Trapper because I'm going to need to get the Yeti as soon as possible. So I need to do the Trapper first so that I can potentially get the Yeti. Um, we're going to have to go like this first, I think. And just like we talked about, we're going to just completely be burned down, huh? We might have to actually do the... We, we might actually have to do that stencil that we just talked about. Okay, we get the Yeti. We get the Jetty. We get the Jetty. He gets the Nar. We do the stand swap. We can clear two of his units. We can also just kill the we can also just kill this by doing the bloody business. So maybe we actually go like this first. If we let him get Because he hasn't done any damage right now. So maybe we actually wait. Maybe we actually wait and we just do LeBlanc first. Do the Jetty plus LeBlanc to get some nice attack. If the opponent decides not to block, they're taking 10. We can potentially do the Inner Beast and do a lot of damage. Um. Okay, so opponent's going to have... Oh, he did level up. Yeah, he does level up because he has the... Um... Yeah, he had the... the... He had the scrappy bomb. I forgot about the scrappy bomb. So that's on me. We can still kill that Nar because of the bloody business, which will also level up LeBlanc. We can block everything else. We still go down to... Proshan will save us against like random stuff. Okay, so he is, he's smart. He decides to block here. So if that's the case, maybe we don't do the bloody business then. Maybe we just kill. So maybe we just do like this. This will block the most amount of damage. We still go down to 6. LeBlanc is leveled up. We lose most of our units. We kill the Nar. We still have Bloody Business. And we also have Inner Beast available. To protect against like a... Okay, yeah. So he does it like this. This is not going to matter. Because the Inner Beast saves us, right? We will lose the LeBlanc. No, we won't. We won't lose the LeBlanc here. We won't lose the LeBlanc. She will live at 1. And he uses his, do he uses his double up. So we we'll get to level up LeBlanc. And be able to push a lot of damage next turn. I guess another double up will be a problem because now we don't have. Yeah, another double up is a problem because now we don't have like a way to actually save our unit. We might have to do overwhelm on the LeBlanc, but then we lose to like a make it. Okay, Trojan is huge. Trojan is huge. So now we should actually do the overwhelm on the LeBlanc. So we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna do overwhelm and then we're gonna do the mirror image. So the mirror image on the LeBlanc will give us two units that have overwhelm. Yeah. While still also having Trojan available in case that we have to play around and make a rain. At the very least, the opponent's gonna have to block with everything. Right? At the very least, the opponent's gonna have to block with everything. Meaning that they're gonna be down to just no cards. Yeah. Actually, we still kill him. We still kill him anyways because it's 777. But you can see the combo there. We can get that overwhelm on the LeBlanc or, or another unit and then be able to do the bloody uh, the mirror image. You're able to just push so much damage here. So, yeah, GG's. So, in this matchup, we'll be going up against Ash LeBlanc. Okay. So, obviously, they have stuff like Colin Strike and the stuff. They have stuff like Freezes, which makes our attacks with our champions a little bit awkward. I don't mind keeping the Chaffer and Glory Seeker. At least we can try to force out, like, we can force out the Freeze early on. Not join the Uther is a little bit awkward, but I think it should be okay. Oh, this is not bad. This is not a bad draw. It's not a bad draw. I'm gonna start pushing a lot of damage early on, and when he tries to block it, obviously it's gonna be it's gonna be a five attack unit, which is pretty good. I think we just go ahead and do the Wonder as well. Opponent shouldn't have any good blockers here. If anything, they probably have the Chaffer and Glory Seeker. 
Oh, there we go. We push the four damage. So the, the, this deck wants to be aggressive early on. So the fact that we're getting four damage this early is pretty good, especially when now we also have Udyr. So now we can do this, and then we also have the Trophy and Glory Seeker next turn. And potentially can just get the Jetty. I'm okay with this. He could freeze this. Yep, but that's one freeze gone, by the way, right? So I don't mind him freezing that. I don't mind him freezing that. That's one freeze gone, right? He's trying to starve up the pressure. But that's one freeze that I don't have to worry about. So that's pretty good. We also get the we also get the enraged jetty right off the bat. So let's do this first. Let's do the let's do the enraged jetty first. Um so that we can actually Okay, well that's unfortunate. I was hoping that he didn't have his own enraged jetty. It's unfortunate that he did. He could have another free, so he could have the troll shan here, and then we get punished. Because we're gonna lose this for free. Otherwise, opponent goes down to nine, and then we summon Udir next turn. Okay, so that's a troll shan. So he gets to keep his Jerry alive. He has to keep his trapper alive as well. The Jerry can just die by blocking this. We can block the that. So I think I'm still in a good spot. Um I guess we have to be worried about Ash here. Oh, what? Okay. We have two options. We can do LeBlanc. I think LeBlanc is actually better. So LeBlanc is better because we have Trollshan available for us. Wow. He actually went for it. So now we can just do this, right? And we kill his whole board. While still keeping ours alive. Yeah. This is completely fine with me, right? He actually goes for it. Sacrifices almost his whole board. LeBlanc is about to be leveled up, right, from another attack. We can go ahead and summon Udyr. I think it's fine to summon the Udyr first and get the stance up, because we will have a Troll Shen available for us. Now, the Punish here is going to be... So, the Punish here is going to be the Ice Bell Archer, right? Ice Bell Archer can be a little bit annoying, but here we can do Regeneration in the Udyr, and he shouldn't have a way to stop this. His Ligi Marauder is not doing that much. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we just do it like this. I guess he could have... Um... <laughs> okay, okay, that's pretty smart. So he does the Colin Strike. So by doing the Colin Strike like this, there's no way for us to stop this because this is still down to hell. He stops us from getting advantage on this. Um, we could attack right now and push this damage and then we'll get the LeBlanc. But then I feel like that's just us losing value. I guess we are pushing 6 damage, which is pretty good. And we can keep our Jetty alive because we have Troll Shan. If he attacks like this, he's just losing this for free. Okay. Did he forget about the LeBlanc level up? So that's one Colin Strike, Colin Strike down. And the opponent had to also use... The opponent had to also use um, a Troll Shan. Yeah, he forgot about the LeBlanc level up. That's what I figured. When he blocked like that, I was like, there's no way you do that unless you forgot about her level up. There's two things we can do here. We can do the Hiara Allseer, which I think is better than doing the bloody business. Because if the opponent tries to attack with the block, we have Troll Shen. Okay, that's a little bit unfortunate. Because the opponent will be able to kill the LeBlanc. Do we let him kill the LeBlanc? He even goes for this. So I guess we just I, I guess we do let him kill the LeBlanc then, right? We let him kill the LeBlanc and then we just go for this. We just go for this right here. There's no way for us to save LeBlanc, so I think it's fine to do it like this. And then we open attack for Lethal next time. Opponent, even if the opponent has that, yeah, there we go. Opponent <laughs> misplay last turn and that kind of cost him the game. Um there was a good play though with the troll shine into the calling strike. It just ended up not being enough. So yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Draven Sion. Okay, so Draven Sion, Draven Sion. This is a pretty aggressive matchup. Do, am I supposed to just put a lot of pressure on them too? We can try to do it that way. I don't know how much that's going to work out. I guess our units are slightly bigger. So maybe we do it like that. This is not the hand that we were looking though for. So, unfortunately, I was trying to put pressure on them, but with this hand, I don't think that we can. 
so we don't have blockers now we can do the we can do the one there but that's all that we can do hmm Uther is pretty good so Uther, Uther might give us a little bit of an out because Uther becomes really big big enough that the opponent cannot deal with him opponent is going full on aggressive I think keeping the will in death is okay to be able to kill like a draven right here yeah I think that's fine I think if the opponent attack, if the opponent summons Draven right here, we want to kill him with the Willing Death. Damn it. You know what? I'm just going to do this. This is going to save you more damage, just in case that the opponent has Portal Cannon. Just in case that the opponent has Portal Cannon, I want to do this. It technically saves me more damage over the long term. Opponent even gives us this, even gives us this kill right here, which is completely fine with us. Um... I don't mind Double Glory Seeker. I don't mind the Double Glory Seeker because it makes the opponent have to develop one of these guys. One of these girls, sorry. And if the opponent doesn't develop anything, they're going to get hit for 10 damage. Opponent could have like a Mystic Shot or something. But then they'll need two. I take this 10 damage all the time. I'm taking this 10. It's a tempting pass, but I have to take this 10 damage all the time. If opponent does Mystic Shot, they don't have enough mana to summon the Twin Blade Revenant. If they only do a single Mystic... Okay, so I guess... Okay, so the Grenadier... Alright, he discarded the Scion, apparently. So the Grenadier is able to block one of them. And then he has the Mystic Shot. Alright, so he gets to kill both. We still get to push uh, the Reputation, right? So if we ever draw the Tactician, we're still in a good spot. The only problem here is we don't have a blocker for that, right? Unless we just let the Uther die. And I don't think letting I don't think letting the Uther die is correct. I don't think letting the Uther die is correct. So I think we just do the double stance swap next turn. So we can level up Uther right here by doing the regen. I guess we cannot. I I I, I miscounted my mana. We definitely still have to do the regen first. We do the regen. We have the Willing Death to be able to block next turn. We can level up Udyr with our attack. Opponent decides not to block. He's going to do the Flame Chompers to be able to kill us. Yeah, he's going to try to do the Flame Chompers to be able to kill us. Um, To be able to pull the Udyr, I mean. We're going to have to rely on the Willing Death to be able to do something. If the opponent has Scion, it's already leveled up. That's a problem because we can't deal with the Scion. Because the opponent still has these both fearsome attackers. So we, we actually needed to take that pass then. On that turn where we actually got greedy, we actually needed to take that pass. Yeah, so he does like this, meaning that we actually... Hmm... We don't have enough to kill like everything. Like let's say the opponent has Scion. He's gonna always be able to pull this, right? We can do the deal one to everything, but all we're doing is saving the damage from here. We're not dealing enough damage here. If we do this, we can potentially protect against the Scion. I think we're always protecting against the Scion everything, anyways, right? Yeah, we still have enough to protect against the Scion regardless of what we do. So I'm just going to do this and set it up so that we can potentially, if the opponent gets greedy, potentially be able to kill the Risen Rider. I don't, I don't think I have a choice. Based on my hand, how my hand is, I don't have a choice. Because I'm, I'm going to have to do the, I'm going to have to do the Uther spell next turn. To be able to at least kill the Risen Rider. Yeah, so the opponent gets to do this anyways. And then um, we lose to, we lose to the Scion attacking again. We're going to have to keep the Willing Death open to be able to kill the Scion. We do this. Align us to kill this. We take 8 damage. Um, we take 8 damage. And we still lose because the opponent is going to have 4 more that they can deal. I guess we can actually protect ourselves from Scion by doing the Willing Death instead this turn and then do the Scion next turn. If the opponent has a if the opponent has a second Pearl Cannon, then we actually lose there. 
So if we block here, so we have to block here. Now, if we block here, we can do this. We go down to six. We can do another stance swap that will put us, that will put our, that will put our uh, Uther at nine HP, which is not enough, but it has to be this way. It has to be this way for us to be able to get the zero cost stance swap. Yeah, it has to be this way. We're still gonna take four, so we get on to three. We get on to three. Um, we're gonna have to rely on the big Udyr with a big overwhelm next time. So we have to do it like this. This only takes us to nine, allows us to defend the uh, the Scion, uh, but it's not gonna be enough for anything else. We still take four, meaning that we still go down to three. Yeah, so the opponent has to get it side or any other burn, we lose the game. Opponent has three cards on their hand. We just have to hope that it's like a mystic shot and not like a decimate or anything like that. Or, or it's not, a, not, a, not another sign, right? Another sign is also a problem. Because we can give this we can give this over one right now. I guess opponent could summon the lost soul and that would actually allow him to survive. Yeah, lost soul actually lets him survive. Um it's a pretty good blocker for the opponent. Come on, either you have to burn or you have to play the lost soul. I don't know why the opponent's thinking so much about it. Come on. Ah, man, we were one off. We were one off from being able to survive the Scion attack and then being able to attack with like a really big Udyr, huh? That would have been so nuts. We always go for the Overwhelm. We always go for the Overwhelm. It's going to force the opponent to summon another thing here. If the opponent has the burn, we always lose to the burn, right? Okay, so he, ha he had the second Scion. So he had the second Scion... So no matter what we do, we lose to the second sign regardless. So yeah, GG's. Welcome back, everybody. You can see what I meant about how much pressure you can put some time because of your big attack units. Um, but you also see the vulnerability of this deck. This deck dies to like have removal. So stuff like Scorched Earth, Vengeance, even Guillotine you saw in that one game that we lost against... Um, I guess you might not have seen that game, but yeah, we, you know, how we move like that is very tough. Block can be really bad for us as well. Uh, so those, those, pretty much, if you run into Ezreal Nazis, you're going to have a bad time. And then some control decks like FTR as well, or Darkness can also be really bad times for you. A lot of other decks though, especially like a lot of mid-range decks, I think this deck can do really well into because you can put a lot more pressure than them because of the fact that your units have so much more attack. So they never have any favorable blocks and you can just uh, attack it, attack it, attack it, attack it. Until eventually you can drop an Uther down or have a tactician in the field and just be able to swing the game around because of your tempo. So yeah, I really like, I really like this deck. In terms of Mulligan, you know, it really depends on the matchup. Uh, definitely, I like keeping the Wonder and the Trapper a lot, and I like the LeBlanc. So these three are really key units. The Glory Seeker is a good keep if the opponent doesn't have like a one damage pin. Then Snapper is also really good early on because he can put a lot of pressure early into the opponent. And the Reckless Trapperian is also good. So pretty much, if you get any of your units here, it can be pretty good. Uh, sometimes I will keep the Uther if I feel like I have a rest, if I have a, a good curve. Um, but you know, it might be. You might have to kick Udyr a lot of times if you don't get like your early units, especially because remember, the Trafarians are not blockers. So you have to make sure that you just don't die to like the opponent being too aggressive versus you. So you just be careful about that. I think you can go ahead and kick most of the spells as well um, and just focus on keeping your units and just going for that aggro, aggro game plan. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the games today. Remember, if you like the content to subscribe below, I post LR videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch September, where we stream three to four times a week. And you can also find us on Twitter and Discord. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And sorry that you guys have to sit through my Uder obsession. And I'll see you all again tomorrow.